We woke up on Friday morning to the news that uh, Matt Hancock uh, had been having an affair with his close aide, uh, Gina Colodangelo. Uh, we, of course, Saturday night, we had his resignation. Not that he thinks he's done anything wrong, of course. Matt Hancock definitely doesn't think he's done anything wrong. Uh, but, but, of course, uh, he thinks that if he goes quickly and relatively quietly, that, uh, well, it'll all blow over doesn't look like it is, uh, quite apart from all the investigations into the ministerial code. Still question marks on quite a lot of the front pages today uh, about his relationship with uh, this uh, woman. And uh, married, of course, both of them with three children. Their marriage is now over. Um, but um, uh, question marks about misuse of public funds uh, and, of course, big issues in terms of security. Why was there a camera in the health secretary's office and how was someone able to get hold of that footage and sell it and or pass it on uh, to a newspaper? Well, we'll be talking about all of that and of course the implications of his replacement Sajid Javid which I would say generally is a thumbs up and we'll be talking about that Freedom March on Saturday in London it was such a pleasure and I have to say got to meet so many I mean so many many talk radio listeners and uh, and what a lovely bunch you are I have to say really if you do come up to say hello uh, and uh, just uh, free hugs were on offer um i just i just want to say um, absolute pleasure to have met you all and i really 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 appreciate uh, you taking the time to come and say hello uh, let's uh, talk uh, right now to tom slater he's deputy editor of spiked online and he's joining us all this morning good morning to you tom morning julia let's start shall we let's go let's do what yes let's start by going back to, to, to Friday and Saturday here um, with the news that Matt Hancock uh, was having this affair with Gina Colodangelo, one of his aides on the public payroll, of course, wife of a millionaire uh, a boss of Oliver Bonus, the uh, fashion uh, range or the fashion and gift shop range. I'm still not quite still yet to work out what expertise the woman's had at all uh, from her jobs in PR that she should have anything to do with the Department of Health and be on uh, be paid for out of my taxes. But there we are. Um, uh, the decision of Matt Hancock to resign no doubt came about because there were big concerns about more stories coming in the Sunday papers. Mm -hmm. It's quite clear there was more to come. Uh, but also, of course, total and abject lack of support from pretty much anyone other than the prime minister for him to stay in his position. And we're not entirely sure that it was uh, that forthcoming and full, you know, full, full uh, from the, uh, the, the prime minister either. What do you make of his decision to go? Well, I think he just had no other option. <clears throat> As you say, the Prime Minister was still kind of sticking by him. You know, sacking an adulterer might have been quite tricky from Boris Johnson's yeah. perspective. But there was also just the outrage was so palpable because at the end of the day, no one cares about Matt Hancock's private life. Yeah. The problem is that he made all of our private lives his business, the state's business, by issuing us all of this increasingly insane guidance, criminalising um, even just the most personal interaction. So to see him flagrantly break it at a point when he was still telling people that it was banned to hug anyone yep. by force of law, this, of course, was untenable. And even for, I think, a lot of MPs who, from what you can tell, have been incredibly conscious of not being seen or any of their families being seen to break any of these quite labyrinthine rules that secretly we all find our ways around in one way, shape or form. So I think that just drained any support Hancock might have had, which in many ways, wasn't that much to begin with at this point in terms of the parliamentary part. Yeah, exactly. I mean, again, we already know, you know, how many of the backbench Tory MPs have no time for these reg these uh, uh, rules at all. And this was a key thing, wasn't it? it look, do, you know, do I like the idea that these people are doing the dirty on their other halves? Absolutely not. I mean, the, I think the most, you know, the single most damning aspect of this story is the revelation from Sim Shipman in the Sunday Times. And Tim Shipman is a very, I used to work with him for many years. He knows his stuff. Uh, and and, uh, and uh, his revelation that uh, Thursday night, Matt Hancock got the call uh, the, from the Sun that there was going to be this story about him in the papers. He tells the news to his wife of 15 years, mother of his three children. She apparently thinking they've got a perfectly happy marriage, not under any idea any idea at all that he was having an affair with a woman who she, of course, would have known socially. They were old friends of mm. university uh, and go to the same party, same circuit and the like. Um, breaks the news to his two older children, wakes up his youngest child, according to this account, to tell the child that he's leaving the family home. I mean, 
wow. And if that doesn't tell you what this man is like, yes, turns out he's in love with this woman. He's going to leave the family and the kids. Um, well, I mean, I hope they're very, very happy together. Um, but um, I do wonder, I do wonder uh, how attractive Matt Hancock will be when he's no longer Mr. You know, you, Mr. Running the Universe, controlling everyone's lives, health secretary uh, and with his mysterious car and all that. And when he's just a lowly backbench MP on a backbench MP salary, I wonder how attractive he will be at that point. Uh, but there we are. But um, the key thing is, Private life, that's his private life. I would really wish all the papers and the and the media would get their cameras away from the Hancock family home. Mm. Mrs. Hancock does not deserve any of this. She should be left alone. It's absolutely outrageous, that. But um, it is the fact that this is a man who who went out of his way to condemn anybody, whether it was Professor Neil Ferguson, whether it was the uh, a medical officer in Scotland who'd broken the rules, um, women walking with a cup of coffee in, you know, in the, in, in, in the wild getting done by the police. I mean, he was, oh, he was there, wasn't he, with his little, <laughs> and that is against the rules. Um, <laughs> he was really, really up on all this stuff, telling people they couldn't hug each other at funerals, for God's sake, telling people they had to wear masks in, uh, uh, you know, in, in weddings. And there he was, you know, getting all, you know, all up close and personal with his aide in the work office. I mean, I'm sorry. It's not a mystery, is it, why we constantly have people self-isolating in the world of politics. We've managed to work in this office for the last year. We've, I think we had one incident involving someone who didn't catch it at work and didn't pass it on to anyone at work. Not a single person at work got it. And she had COVID. And, and, and you know, we've managed to survive just fine in this office. So God knows what they're getting up into, getting up to in Whitehall. Oh, this is it. And I think also, as you say, where Hancock's concerned, he really was the Puritan in chief, yeah. as the, there was that quote in the papers over the weekend. You know, first of all, all of these regulations were signed into law, basically at the stroke of his pen anyway. But also he was right out front and centre and really stressing, even in the question of kind of sex and relationships, yeah. really kind of making absurd statements. I remember at the beginning of lockdown last year where he said to couples who weren't cohabiting, make your choice and stick with it, by which yeah. he meant you either move in together or you're not going to be able to see each other yeah. <laughs> during this entire time. And for him to then turn around and do this it is just so striking. But as you say, I think as we saw with the G7, as we saw what's been going on with the Euros, it's always been one rule for them and the other rule for us. This yeah. is just one situation in which, you know, a camera happened to catch him in the act of doing it. Yeah, absolutely. And there, of course, there are lots of probes into, I love the word probe, we should use it a lot today, um, <laughs> probes into, uh, for various different reasons, uh, into, you know, who, who, you know why was there, why was there a camera in the in the health secretary's office, a lot of other cabinet ministers are rather unhappy about this. Is there a camera in their office? And who leaked the footage? Of course, uh, big question marks also about the contracts that were uh, paid out to chums because it, we now it's emerged from front of the papers yesterday again that uh, he was doing conducting an awful lot of government business. And yeah, 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 have that contract. Yeah, you know, you know, is, I mean, it's like an Oprah Winfrey show for a friend of Hancock, wasn't it? It's like <laughs> you get a PPE contract, you get a P everyone gets a PPE contract, uh, all done on his private email again. Okay. The basic rules. The rule is you're not allowed to do that. I don't understand why people think that they're OK. Well, now we do. They do think they're above the rules. Uh, there's also, you know, the police investigation, the Labour want. Uh, we've also got, you know, question about uh, abuse of public money, of the appointment of uh, Gina Colodangelo, uh, her being taken to the health summit, the G7 health summit in Oxford. I mean, the questions are coming thick and fast. So um, uh, that that is not going to disappear off. One bit of good news, he's entitled, I don't know why, to a sixteen thousand pound payoff um, for leaving. I mean, if you you know if you resign a job in disgrace, I don't know why you get a payoff at all. But he is entitled to that. Apparently, he's not going to take it. So that's nice of him, isn't it? Um, let's talk about the uh, replacement though. Sajid Javid. Mm. He uh, resigned as Chancellor eighteen months ago now, um, before he even had his first budget. This, of course, a row between him and Dominic Cummings. Dominic Cummings, then of course the Prime Minister's chief advisor. Remember him. Um, you never hear from Dominic Cummings these days, do you, Tom? Where, where's he gone? Um, but um, <laughs> but he, he basically insisted that Sajid Javid's aides uh, and advisers were all appointed by him uh, and were loyal to him and not Sajid Javid's. That's not how it works. Uh, Sajid Javid basically resigned on a point of principle that he was going to have his own staff. Um, so we know he's a man of principle. We know he's uh, not a pushover. We know he's not sitting there going, oh, I just desperately want to be at the top of the greasy pole and I'll do anything for it. He's got a little bit of backbone. Um, but also very encouraging, the very first thing he said was that uh, um, his, uh, his uh, priority is to return to normal as quickly as possible. Very encouraging. Well, we can only hope that that's how it turns 
to be because in terms of the quad so-called the four ministers including the prime minister michael gove rishi sunak and now sajid javid who make decisions given the fact that rishi sunak naturally is seen as wanting to open the economy much sooner that does tip the balance considering how lockdown fanatical that matt hancock was but i guess we do have to wait and see because time and again throughout this crisis i'm sure you've read things as well as i have mm. julia where you hear about this minister or that minister who's really pushing in quite in private yeah. for a more liberal approach and then they kind of just roll over when the science is presented to them quote unquote in the clinch so yes very encouraging to see those quotes i thought it was interesting that it seemed like department of health officials had stressed a slightly different bit of his statement to avoid the opening up as soon as possible <laughs> shows you the kind of tensions within that department but yeah. yes it, it, encouraging signs nonetheless as to what Javi's mindset is going to be well, coming into and bearing job. in mind he's not just saying this for effect that he you know he's on record as early as May last year saying we needed to reopen as soon as possible and get back mm. to normal he's spoken repeatedly about the need for there being you know this sort of analysis cost benefit analysis of the economy and the damage that having the economy closed does uh, but also the damage it does to to, uh, to to health in the future as well and we know that I mean that just more and more stories emerging I mean of course, we know we've got this huge, huge, huge backlog of cases in the NHS. I mean, that is certainly a big issue that's going to be in his uh, entry. Also, the revelation on the front of the mail today, lost children of lockdown. A shock report reveals 100,000 pupils failed to return to education full time when their schools reopened. And we always knew this, the kids that were failed already by the school system uh, were the ones who lost out the the most during lockdown in terms of not getting Zoom lessons or any impact, you know, input from their teachers. And they're the ones who've been lost. And they're the ones, of course, who most need education to effectively escape the lives that they've been born into. Absolutely mm. tragic. So tragic. And so so much, as you say, for Sajid Javi coming in to try and actually claw back these huge questions of backlogs, all the rest of it. I think one thing that you saw hinted at in some of the reporting as well, which is this argument which is going to take place towards the autumn about reintroducing restrictions in one way, form or another. It's something that Chris Whitty has mooted. It's something that the Prime Minister still refuses to rule out. And I'm hoping that Sajid Javi coming in with that mindset, as you're sketching out, very aware of those concerns will push very firmly against it, knowing that public health is not just about one disease. It's about yes. all kinds of different things. Yeah, exactly. Now, look, we have seen COVID cases going up again. Um, but again, up 60% in a week, the positive test. But again, there's just a mass rush on testing, isn't there? Huge number of children in school being tested. 214,000 children were out of school in one of the weeks in mid-June this, this month. 214,000 children, only 9,000 of whom had a positive test. And bearing in mind that many of those positive tests would have been a false positive. Um, I mean, it's just utterly ridiculous. Utterly, utterly ridiculous.